parametric equations. Um, these are two equations where x and y are functions of another variable. The best way to describe this is you have something moving on a graph, maybe it's an ant, and it's moving with time, right? But it's not just moving horizontally, it's moving up and down too. So we have to consider its horizontal movement as a function of time and its vertical movement as a function of time. Now sometimes it might be that our parameter is an angle, um, so we'll, we'll get into that as well. So we have an x equation that has t's, time, and a y equation that has time. So could we find the location of this ant at time 3? Well, yeah, you can. All you have to do is plug in t is 3. So you would just plug in 3 for each of the t's and you'd be able to find the exact location of that ant on the graph at any given time. And then to find the y coordinate at time 3, we plug 3 in for time there, get the square root of 4, which is 2. So we would know that this, at that given moment, at t equals 3, we're at the point 15, 2. Now, a minute or a second later, that ant could be totally somewhere else. What about if we were given these equations? x equals 3t, y equals t squared plus 5. Where's the ant at time 2? So at t equals 2, we are at the point 6, 9. What about here? Now what if I wanted to take these two equations and somehow combine them back into a regular old equation where I'm looking at y in terms of x? Well, the process is pretty simple. Let's start with solving for t in the x equation. So I'm going to rearrange this one to be t equals. So I'd have to add the 3 to the other side, so that's x plus 3 equals t. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression and substitute in for t in the other one. Good old substitution from way back when. Distribute. What about here? How could I solve for t? So that's x equals 1 fourth t. So to get rid of the 1 fourth, I'd have to multiply both sides by 4. So that's going to be 4x equals t. That's got to replace both of the t's over here. So this 4x goes in for both t's. So I'll get y equals 4x squared plus 4x. Substitute for both of them. And be careful here, when I'm squaring 4x, I'm squaring the 4 and the x, so that's really going to be 16x squared plus 4x. Now what if we were given our x and y, not with time, not with t, but in terms of theta? 
So what we're going to do is we're going to solve each of these for sine of theta and cosine of theta. So I can rearrange this and get cosine theta by itself by dividing by 3. So I get x over 3 equals cosine theta. And on this one, to get sine by itself, I'd have to divide by 3. So y over 3 equals sine theta. Now we know forever and ever and ever that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. That means sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So I can take this ratio, this fraction that equals sine, and plug it in. Now that's technically y squared over 9 plus x squared over 9 equals 1. Try this one. Done. So that's pretty easy, but what if we wanted to go the other direction? What if I was given the rectangular and I wanted to rewrite it in two equations that had t in them? But I was only given this and this parameter, that t equals x divided by 3. Well, what I'm going to do is solve for x here. So I want to get x by itself, so I'd have to multiply both sides by 3, and I get x equals 3t. Oh, one done. Now I need an equation that has y in terms of t. Well, now that I know what x equals, I'm going to come over here and replace x with what x equals. Oh, the x equation and the y equation. Done. Let's try another one t equals x minus 2. Okay, so x equals t plus 2. One done. Now I need to rewrite y in terms of t. And y is x squared, so I take x and square it. Done. t equals 2x. So x equals t divided by 2. Done. y equals 1 over 2x. So y equals 1 over 2 times x, which is t over 2. The 2's would cancel, so I'd be given arrow y equals 1 over t. Now, I mentioned that this is, you know, when we have time. And so if we're talking about things in real life, things always happen in real life with horizontal movement and vertical movement, and time is always involved. So what if I have an automobile that drives off a 50-meter cliff? Well, that's just lovely. And they're driving at 25 meters per second. And we know that its path is following this distance. Well, the x-coordinate, his horizontal distance, is going to be 25 times t, the time. 
but its y coordinate is changing at a different rate because gravity is involved. Okay. When will the automobile strike the ground? Okay, so let's think about that. When is it going to strike the ground? So if it's striking the ground, that means when it's landing. So that means when striking the ground would be when y is 0. So the first thing I want to do is figure out when y is 0. So I'm going to replace y with 0 and solve for t. Well, I'm going to add this over here so everything's nice and positive. Then divide by 4.9. 50 divided by 4.9. But I want to take the square root of that. And that gives me time equals 3.19. And what were we measuring in? Seconds. Then it says, how far from the base of the cliff is that point of impact? So we want to find the x value at that time. And x is 25 times t. So I would literally just take 25 times my last answer and get 79.86 meters.